At this point in your studies, I think it's appropriate to start to deepen our understanding of the work, sort of the secret of light and, and how it impacts the system. And now that you have a sense of the handholds and a little bit of the rhythm of the system, we're going to go deeper and we're going to start to accelerate your knowledge of the work here. Dr. Sutherland told us to trust the tides. The tides are the different rhythms that are happening simultaneously in the system. You have been practicing the CRI, which is a cranial rhythmic impulse. We're now going to introduce you to the other two tides, which really separates us in many ways from the other models that are practiced because we focus on the deeper rhythms more than we do the cranial rhythmic impulse. One of my teachers told me that the CRI was an expression of unresolved trauma that is being held in the system as inertial forces. It's a waveform riding upon the other two tides, especially the long tide, which is the divine ordering principle. Its rate is variable, and the motion that is expressed by it has a changeable nature based on forces that are still being organized and are unresolved and held within the system. The cranial rhythmic impulse is really perceived as we focus in on um, an expression of generally one bone or a few bones, flexion and extension around separate parts. And it's a, it's, it predominates in our awareness. That's what we're really perceiving is a few bones and their movement qualities. And these movement qualities are organizing around a midline. And so we hold that visualization, not too intently, within this entire field. And that allows us to ascertain a, a certain quality of organization around inertial patterns. Okay, so let's try some work now around this mid-tide. Because we know that the CRA is a wave form that's riding on top of this other tide. So what we want to do is we want to take any of the bone holds that you've learned, and I would suggest uh, that actually all the bone holds, all the listening stations, so to speak, all the portals into this information, uh, to be used for uh, playing around with this concept of the mid-tide and, and, and feeling the difference that you will uh, very much be aware of when you, when you actually are in the mid-tide and what, it, what is required sort of mentally as far as your focus in order to get there. So we're going to put the hands again on the bone, whichever bone you choose, and we're going to float on the tissues. Don't forget to always firmly ground your elbows and don't grab onto anything. Very important, do not grab onto the tissues. Lightly, very lightly, uh, as light as you can imagine, the weight of a silk scarf. And so what I want you to do is ground into your fulcrums and become aware of the relationship between the bones. The focus is on, right now, the classic flexion and extension. The faster rhythm that is created by deeper tidal forces. So what you are listening to in the CRI level are the expressions and motion of individual parts. Again, we're just kind of going over this. Organizing around the midline. So perception is more about form and resistance as opposed to an intercellular motility of these parts. So it's usually not available at that CRI level. The CRI level is more about doing things, you know, locating inertial fulcrums and applying various techniques of traction or disengagement, direction of tide. We're doing things to it. And, and there is the difference, really, because when you drop down into the mid-tide, it's not about doing. It's more about being present and witnessing the actions of the system and allowing the system to come to you with its story. So we're going to listen to a fluidic tide, become aware, that's happening two and a half times a minute. So there's value to counting. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, all the way out to ten or twelve, there'll be a turning and then back. It's, it's almost like you're sinking down into the fluid now. 
You've been floating on top of it, listening to a rhythm that's happening 8 to 12 times. Now I want you to kind of immerse yourself in the fluids. Use any kind of imagery that works for you, but just sink down. Use your fulcrum in your, in your spine. Create a, a feeling from your heart center or your third eye or your tantien. And really ground in and listen to an entire biosphere, which is around like a cocoon around about three feet around the body and tune into that and don't be interested in the bone movements that you are palpating that are the portals into the into the system that they're not important in this exercise the fluids can be observed if you listen as an expression of tidal motions almost estuary like fingers moving and it's not a a one linear tide that moves back and forth and and just listen in a way and be aware of that feel that it's called the fluid tide you may experience through this tactile expression uh, a tensile field and it's it's unified it has a quality of being connected it's as if there's this gelatinous uh, fluid that's filling a water bag and, and when you touch and hold one part you're aware of a tensile quality to the entire field all the way down to the feet and and beyond actually in this this biosphere that's around it dr fulford who is part of that inner circle of students from of dr sutherland uh, who i think lived till he was the uh, dr fulford lived till he was 92 actually said that he did some of his greatest work in the field around the body I know that's a little bit crazy of a thought at this particular point in, in your learning, but um, there's more to meet the eye. I remember we're talking about a liquid crystalline matrix that has frequency and an electromagnetic field. So we're delving into some a different realm here uh, with this work. So you, you're becoming aware now of not just individual structures that you've been palpating in the beginning of this DVD series, but, but with a whole field now. We're getting into field dynamics. So you feel the body you are palpating is functioning as a whole unit, not just one little bone that you go, oh, here's that bone and it's moving like this and we've showed you the movement quality. You want to keep that in the field, but you want to be able to palpate this whole being. And you're going to become aware eventually, uh, and you bring it into the field now, of a midline. And this midline is a fluid midline. And it and you'll feel surge-like mo movements uh, and at the inhalation or flexion stage, you'll feel like this tidal surge is happening. And it's again, it's not linear. It, there's, it, it moves just like if you're going to the ocean and you're watching a wave coming in. It doesn't all come in linearly with an exact line. And we want you to be aware of that surge and, and the aspects of it and the different feeling of it and where some moves more easily or more quickly and where others are slow and maybe impeded or have to go around almost like an eddy in a river. Um, then you'll feel this surge-like motion at exhalation. And when it recites, like the waves going back into the sea, um, there's a quality of receding, just like you, the wave that recedes back into the ocean, and a settling at that point within this tensile field. The beauty of this of this field of listening is that the inherent treatment protocol which we call the body's way of teaching us telling us what it needs not what we want to impose upon it in some fixed mechanical way of moving around the system regardless of what the system needs this is more of a listening waiting asking type of uh, craniosacral therapy approach. The beauty of this system is that you don't have to feel like you're doing something to it. You don't have to fix anything. You wait for the system to tell you what it needs. It's Dr. Sutherland said, get behind the curtain. It's okay. You don't have to, what would it be like not to have to f know? And when you get that, that you don't have to know anything. You just have to be present. Know the anatomy understand the physiology but not have to know what to fix because I don't care how good you are I don't care how many techniques you know and you may be the top shelf in your particular discipline but you can't fix everything that comes through your door it just doesn't happen and that allows you knowing that allows you 
to relax and just be present with the system and allow your journey as a cranial sacral therapist, which is a lifetime journey, to unfold in a manner that is constructive in the sense that you don't have to be concerned about getting it right. You just have to be you know, concerned about wanting to learn and wanting to be good at what you do, but that comes through practice and not having to know all the time everything and the answers, because it just doesn't work that way. I am humbled by the teachers who have taught me, some in person uh, and some by their written work and their audio work, who have shared their journey with me. And some of these people have been doing the work for Dr. Jealous for 45 years, Franklin for 35, Charles Swenson for over 30, and there's just, and Dr. Upledger, not to forget him, uh, who helped me get my start in this work. There is tons of knowledge that they've gained over a long period of time. But you're, we're just getting started. I've only been doing this 16 years, and, and some of you are just getting started. So allow yourself to enjoy the fact that this particular model allows you to not have to know everything.